What up, what up? You tuned in to the Jose Morales podcast where we talk sports, business, and everything in between. I am Jose. We're at the Boxing Academy. Joining me in the ring today is Amelia. Well, I call her Amelia. Her real name is Amy Minter. Welcome, Amy. Hi, how are you? Good. How you feel about being on your first podcast? I feel good. I'm tired because you just put me through a hard workout and sparring, so. So, just to break the ice <laughs> a little bit, Amy's actually very, like, uptight, you know, which, which is weird about it because she's usually talking and talking and talking and talking, so I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible with this talkative girl, but we want to know more about you, and what we're going to talk about today is really how you came about boxing, how you, uh, how you went from this hairstylist chick to competing on amateur shows. She's working on, she's actually going to have her sixth fight here coming up, and she's on a pro card. And uh, she's actually fighting for a 135-pound belt. And we're going to cover that. We're going to cover her, uh, kind of her childhood and how she became who she is today. And, um, but yeah, Amelia, what do you want to tell us? I went to a private Christian school. What school is that? Uh, Cornerstone Christian School. Cornerstone. My parents actually started it. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, started the school? Yeah. What? Yeah. So were, were they like founders? Yeah, or they were they... founders of the school. So um, it was a really small school. There was only, it was kindergarten through 12th grade at first. And then, I mean, it's still school now, but um, it's it's a lot bigger. It's pretty small though. There was only like five people in my class at the oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was really small. Yeah, it was really small. But and how, how was that? Like um, being in a private school in a five, how was it changing? Did you ever go to a public school or were you always private? Well, it was all I knew until I went to public school in eighth grade. Uh, my parents got divorced and so they weren't involved with the school anymore. So I was really good at volleyball. So they had to put me into a public school because I had a good volleyball program. Okay. So until Olympus how, Junior High. How was the divorce for you? Was that difficult? Your parents getting divorced? I mean, I always didn't think it was, but like as an adult now looking back, like I can tell it definitely affected me. Yeah, why sure. is that? Um, so why as an adult looking back, you could tell it affected you and before you, what, what changed? Uh, oh, well, my whole life changed. Um, well, Give I mean, we were like that picture perfect family like that um, you would see. And then, and then overnight it's just like everything was changed and different. And, and then I'm in public school and uh, like private school is so strict. Like I was really sheltered. So I'm going to public school, like, like kids are talking about things. I don't even know what it was. And, and then, um, so it was very shocking. But I've always been someone that adapted to anything, and I'm like, if it's new, I'm just, the, I think about the positive of things. So mm -hmm. I was just really excited just to be, because oh, there's dances too. And I yeah. Like, so like there's something you told me that I found in interesting, that I found this out about you a few months back. You told me you were a gamer, hard time gamer. You <laughs> yeah. played Call of Duty, I think you said it was, right? Yeah. <laughs> when was that time frame when you were doing that? How old were you? Well, oh, I always play video games since little because my brother, I have two older brothers, mm -hmm. Ryan and David, and I've always looked up to my brothers. So I've always wanted to tag along and be yeah. like them. So I always wanted to do anything they did. So I started playing video games with them and actually was better than them. So <laughs> I would always beat them and their uh -huh. friends. My brother used to get heck of pissed. So I would play and then my brother was like, you're really good. You should play online. And I was like, no, online's for nerds. I don't want to do that. And then sure enough, I was that person with the headset on, playing, yelling at kids all the time. Oh, shit. And, and then I used to play in tournaments. Yelling at kids. You've always been that way. <laughs> <laughs> and then I used to play in tournaments. And I, and I would show up to the tournaments, and they'd be like, oh, you can't be in this tournament. Like, this is for real gamers. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I'm good. I'm legit. And I, my first tournament, I think I won second, and then third, and then first. So... How old were you at this time? Uh, that winning these tournaments. I was in high school. So you were in high school gaming it up, winning tournaments. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> so when did you get into um, boxing and all that? How did that come about? I started boxing when I was I was like fourteen, turning fifteen. It was my freshman year of high school. My brother was a boxer, mm -hmm. and it was always his dream to be. Uh, he wanted to be an amateur boxer, and then he wanted to go pro. And um, I was at freshman year, so it was new. Like, I was new at this school. I moved to a new district. I went to Rockland High School. And I started getting bullied by some of the senior girls. And What were they doing? Um, threatening to beat me up. And, they, I mean, I didn't even, like, I didn't have a group of friends yet, really. So what was the reason behind them bullying you? Why did they pick I, I guess there was a boy that liked me, and then one of the girls didn't like it. And so it just started from that, and then they start rumors. So and, it's yeah. sex. 
women <laughs> yeah fighting over guys yeah but i didn't even talk to the guy so it's always been like this with you because you do this now in the gym where guys are fighting over you <laughs> my son is all over you <laughs> he grabs you but anyways we're getting off subject uh, uh that's funny so that's how you got into it so whose idea was boxing so well, i used to go home crying and my brother he and my brother's like well i can't hit a girl and be mean to a girl so he's like let me teach you how to defend yourself because like i was really afraid i was gonna like they're seriously like, saying like we're gonna beat you up and they even like quartered me in like the locker rooms and stuff so like i used to cry bad i really thought i was gonna get beat up so my brother he's like he started teaching me a little bit at home like he'd hold mitts for me and just like kind of teach me combinations and i've always been athletic because i played competitive volleyball what i didn't know that yeah the competitive yeah volleyball. i was a setter and um and so when did you stop doing that i stopped in high school um mm. and right, keep going i'm gonna cut you off so he got oh, you no, into no. which that's kind of I'll, I'll explain that because that's kind of what i when i started doing more of the boxing when the volleyball stopped but um so i i, I just picked up naturally because i was an athlete and um, my brother and i always had a good connection and then he started bringing me into his gym and like i just you know, I picked it up pretty good and did well for a girl. Were you sparring and competing already? Uh, oh, no. Well, I sparred a little bit. Like, I was 15, like a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the first person that, like, some of the first, one of the first person was Alouette. You know who yeah, she is? Alouette, yeah, yeah we used to go at it. But we were, like, 15 at the time. Yeah. Pretty young. Just a little bit. Um, but, like, looking back now, it's, like, nothing compared to, like, what sparring is to me today. But, what was the um, difference? Well, and I think I did a little bit of kickboxing back then too, mm -hmm. but it was more so for the workout, but, um, I picked it up. I liked it and it gave me confidence. And so I was being bullied, bullied for months. And, um, and then where I was on the powder puff football team and it was the freshmen versus the seniors. Played football. I don't know. Amy played football. It was powder puff <laughs> football. And what, what exactly is that? Uh, my bad. I don't know. I don't know. It's football pole. for I don't know. <laughs> it's football for girls. Oh, okay. And so it was the freshman team against the senior team, which was the girls that were bullying me. And um, I was out there playing, and I remember I was getting off the field, and they went and tripped me, and I fell like right in the mud, and like that was like like the first like kind of contact that I had, and like after that I was just like fed up with like being bullied, and so. Um, the next time I ran into them at school, like I would always walk and they'd always be like talking behind my head, saying stuff. And I would just walk away because I, I was scared. I was like really scared of my friends. Like they were young, they were scared too. So they didn't want to get beat up either. So finally, and I don't cuss much. And this is the first time I've ever said a curse word, but, uh, I, I stood around and I was like, you know what? F you. I'm, I'm sick of this. Like, if so you, did you say F you or did oh, you I, say Oh, I actually you? said the word this yeah. time. Cause a fun <laughs> fact, let me tell everybody that does not know this about Amy. Amy actually does not cuss at all. She does not cuss. She says things like that F you or that B word, but she would actually never say it. And recently, I actually tricked her into cussing in Spanish, <laughs> which was pretty good. But all right, so keep going, Amy. So you're a super good girl. You have finally said the word fuck. Well, right? Yeah, I did say the word at the time. It was uh -huh. the first time I said the word. And um, I mean, I, I wouldn't be that intimidating if I said F you. Yeah. So I said the word. I was mad, though. Can you say it now or no? No, I can't say okay, it now. It's, all, right, all right, so <laughs> and, you can't say it. And uh, so I turned around. I was like, F you. But I said the word this time. And I was like, if you want to fight me, then go for it. I'm sick of you saying you're going to, like, beat me up. Let's go. And, like, in my head, I'm like, I really hope they don't want to fight. Because, I mean, I was still scared. I've never fought. But yeah. I, I, I finally had, like, courage to stand up for myself. And, like, that's kind of what boxing did for me at that time. And, you know, and they didn't do anything, of course. And, um, and then it kind of, like, died down for a little bit. But they still were bullying me. And then what ended up happening, there was other girls, because of a boy, at a different school. It was Oakmont High School. They didn't like me because of a boy. And um, they, I actually got into a street fight. What? <laughs> yeah. You don't know this? I, no, I told don't know you. This. So what happened? And so I was at the basketball game, and they were, like, saying things to me and I'm like super nice person so I don't like like to like say things so I'm just like ignoring it ignoring it but then they came up to me after the game and they were like cussing at me saying things and I'm trying to walk away and then the girl like went and just like pushed me and something just clicked like in my head when she pushed me I was like oh no she did not just like she invaded my personal space and I don't know I didn't really think about it I just reacted so after she pushed me I punched her and then I we just got in a fight I don't really remember the fight because my adrenaline was going so bad mm. but from what everyone says like I, I was um, you did a good job 
I was throwing combinations from like whatever I had been learning. And she was like fighting like a cat. And this girl was like, she was known for fighting. So she was like known for like pulling hair and stuff like that. And um, it, it's very interesting what happened though that night because, so after that, uh, people are pulling us apart. I looking at her, she's crying, her nose is bloody. And then, um, and then everyone's like, hey, you got to get out of here because her older sisters are here and they're going to beat you up now. And so I start running her into the parking lot. And then the girls that had been bullying me from my school pull up in a car. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, really? I was now like, they're going to all be you. And up. I was like, and I look at them and I'm like, really? And then I look behind me and the other girls are coming and they're like, get in the car. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. And now they're like cool with me because like I stuck up for myself and they thought I was cool. And then we're cool ever since. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so then, um. I, you, another thing people don't know about you is uh, Shoshana. You love dogs. You're a huge dog mm -hmm. lover. And then you're also a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how dog love, that, that, that love came about and how you got into hair. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, well, I got into hair first. Um, I went to beauty school. and Why? Why did you want to do hair? And how did you pick that? My Well, I always did it in high school. I always did my friend's hair for prom and stuff. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, day of prom, I'd do like six girls' hair, and then I was just like doing hair after hair. I was really, I liked it. It was fun. Um, everyone's like, "You're really good at this. You should do it." And I was like, "No, I, I enjoy doing this." And at that time, I didn't think you can make good money doing hair. And then I actually enjoyed doing it, and I thought that I wouldn't enjoy doing it anymore if I did as a job. So I never really wanted to go like into hair. But then um, I went to a wedding in Chicago for my cousin's wedding, and I, I um, and I saw the hairstylist there, like do a whole wedding party. And she made like a lot of money in one day, you know, like over a thousand dollars. And I'm just like, oh, wow, that's pretty good. And so my grandma was like, Amy, you should really do hair. You're really good with people. And like, there's something really good for you. And so it just something that clicked. And I love my grandma. I'm so close with her. And yeah. um, I called. I signed up for school right then and there. And I. And you told me you were an assistant for a little bit, right? Yeah, because I was I'm that person that I never want to mess up on hair. I've always struggled with like confidence with myself. Mm -hmm. Um. I wasn't, I'm a much more confident person now, but at the time I wasn't. And so when I graduated school, I was like, I feel like I don't know anything. And so I assisted for a long, long, long time, like a really long time. Like I was like that person that was like a really good assistant and everyone's like, okay, you should do hair now. And I'm like, no, I was just too scared. I was like, I was really just, I didn't have confidence. I didn't and think I was good enough. And once you got your confidence enough. up, that's when you did it on your own. Yeah. But I was assisted for a long time. And then I took um, a break from doing hair and uh, I got married. I moved to LA for a while. Mm -hmm. And and then. And by the way, before you go into that, if you guys do not know her husband, Jason, Jason he's off the chain. I love the guy for real. Like, dude, yeah, he's I, I don't give that many people confidence like this. But Jason is one of the people that if I speak to and I talk to and have a conversation with him, I no joke interact with him, lock and listen and learn. He's a he's a man full of knowledge mm -hmm. and uh he's a great dude how uh, before we get back on subject when you got married but how did you meet jason when we were 16 and how, my first job pick up sticks pick up sticks yeah so how did that go about uh well at he, his mom made him get the job because he was kind of a troublemaker mm -hmm. and then i was i got a job because my best friend worked there so I, I just wanted to work actually my mom didn't even know i got a job because she didn't want me to work she wanted me to focus on school so i used to sneak out of the house to go to work and, and that's where you guys met. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The a funny thing that I love to say, uh, tell people about you, Jason told me this. He said, you guys hit it off so well because oh, you guys will call each other at night and he'll literally just put the phone in his ear and Amy will talk the whole night and he wouldn't say a word. <laughs> he said he it was said, easy. <laughs> he said it was an easy relationship. He didn't even have to say nothing. She would do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a, it, and it's true. Amy will no joke will talk to a wall for an hour. <laughs> she could talk to anybody. So, so okay, keep going. So you got married. You moved down to L.A. Yeah. Is, is that where the canine training came about? Yeah, we um, we got Shoshana. She's a Belgian Malinois. They mm -hmm. use them for the military and police a lot. And they're really intelligent dogs. So they, they're they meant for working dogs, so they're not really a good pet. So um, we got into it. I know. Your dog, your car is messed up. I know she's not a good <laughs> pet. Her dog is, her, her dog tore her car up. <laughs> if you have not, besides the fact that it's a messy car, ah, it is her, messy. Her, her shit is fucked up. It it's is. effed up. It's, no, it's bad. It's really bad. It's like one of those memes. Yeah, so keep going. So she messes up. Uh, I mean, she's not really meant to be a pet, but you made her a pet. 
Yeah, yeah. just because she's so well trained. So mm-hmm. we uh, got into it's called Schitzen. It's a German dog sport. It's protection, obedience, and tracking. You ever see the dogs where they're like att- like the guys like wearing like a bodysuit or a sleeve mm-hmm. and they're like attacking it. So. We got into the dog sport just because um, we had to sign a contract with the dog breeder that you have to do something with the dog. So, it's, um, so we started doing the dog sport, um, and then while I was while we were doing that, my health got really, really bad. So, like I was really yeah, what happened? my health. Well, I um, like I'd always had um, like issues growing up and never knew like what was wrong. I'd been like misdiagnosed for like over years, and I always had like pain like two weeks out of the month. I was like in a lot of pain. So I finally went into surgery. It was a laparoscopic exploratory surgery, and I found out I had stage four endometriosis at the time. Ooh. And um, that's when it attacks your organs. Yeah, well, it starts with the uterus and it attacks it, but if you have stage four, it could attack your other organs. And by the time I was diagnosed, because I had been having issues for so long, I already was at stage four. And then after that surgery, um, I was like pretty much like on bed rest. I was like in pain every day of my life, and I was like really sick. I was like. 30 pounds lighter than I am now. I was like wow. sick. I couldn't get out of bed. And then that's when I went through like a really hard time. Cause like I'm having this chronic pain all the time and then I'm not working anymore. Like I didn't have a life of my own anymore. You know, um, you know, I had my dog, which like that kept me cause she was such an active dog. I was like, okay, like it's not fair for her. So she kept me going, but I was really to the point where I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like, Cause my pain was just so bad. And then, and then I was going, I had to go, I had, um, like three surgeries within like a year and a half time. And the first surgery actually made me feel worse. Um, the doctor wasn't a specialist, so it it got pretty bad. And, um, so my dog became like my life, like, you know, like dogs are just always happy to see you. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that's when Shoshana became my world and everything. She's like, what? kept me going People every minute. People always think yeah. your name is Shoshana I know. IG. I know. Oh, Shoshana. I'm like, what? Cause That's I create, a dog. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get messages like, hi, Shoshana girl. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. So tell me about uh, the first time you came here. I met you. How long you been with me here now, training with me? Like three and a half years. Three and a half say? years? That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, but a good two and a half of those years, you were a part-time. You were really full-time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the reason why I say this about Amy is... Um, when you first got here, you were a lot of uh, IG videotaping yourself, mm-hmm. pictures, having a good time, which is nothing wrong with that. No. But you weren't taking it serious as you are now. No. Uh, what is the biggest change and why did you make that change? What made you go from having fun and making it a hobby and just a workout to now you're competing on pro cards? What 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 changed? Um. Well, my life changed when I came here. Like when which you don't know like so i had just moved back here and jason at the time were not together at the time we're together now but we weren't together and like my health like just went downhill and it created like depression anxiety and just like just like i was in the deepest of places which is hard for me because i'm a very happy bubbly person so i moved back up here and i was actually um living with uh my best friend from high school her family and her brother, CJ, who, oh, yeah. you know, CJ. Shiv, came yeah, of course. <laughs> How can I forget about the shiv? <laughs> <laughs> which, you got to share that story. Which, well, okay, so it's funny because he told me, so he's like, yeah, I go to, uh, you know, he told me he comes here. And um, and he's like, yeah. He, and I was like, and I was just like, oh, yeah? I was like, what do you like there? He's like, oh, I learned the shiv. I'm like, and so I'm like, oh, I don't know if this place is legit if you're learning something called the shiv. And he's like, no, they're tight. You got to check it out. You got to check it out. You know, and I love Shannon and CJ and her family. So, like, anything they say, I trust, you know. So, I was like, okay, I'll check it out. And I was going through a really hard time. Like, I was, like, in the lowest of places. And, um, like, I was struggling to, like, fight every day. Like, I couldn't even go to the grocery store. My anxiety was so bad. I, um, and so, like, the only thing that would get me out of bed was seriously just to, like, do stuff with my dog. And um, so he's like, come on, come to the gym. You'll like it. They're awesome there. And it's funny looking back on that because uh, I remember calling. You answered the phone, and you said for me to, like, come in. 
And I remember, I don't know if you remember this, but... I do remember. You ran out of gas. That's what I remember. No, that wasn't the first time. First time? No, that was not the first the day. Second time? That was I like, just remember she ran out of gas. I didn't really know you. You ran you didn't out of know gas. Me. But and she called if you, me to get gas for her. I'm like, I bruh, I didn't you don't have AAA? <laughs> how do you call me? Nah, because, but look, literally, like, I was starting my life over. I didn't really have anyone, like, here. And other than just, like, um, you know, because I hadn't been here since high school. So, like, I like disconnected with a lot of my friends, yeah. you know? And I was like starting over. Plus like when you have anxiety and depression, you kind of seclude yourself too. Mm -hmm. And um, so I remember you told me like where the gym is, which is you come here, it's like right there. But I- You parked in the back. But I couldn't I find go it, meet you, knowing know. me. I'm like, I'm like way over there, I called you. And it's funny if you look back, like meeting me, that's so me, but yeah, you had to come you. get me in the back. Yeah, I and was like, I remember girl. seeing you walking down the street and you're like, Hey, and you're just super nice. Like, you didn't make me feel dumb, but. <laughs> I wanted to, but I didn't know you that well yet. I didn't want to make you dumb. You but if you look back, day. that's me, and it's how I am nowadays. Yeah, total blonde. No, I'm just in my own world. So you came, <laughs> what was it like? You first showed up, what you think? Tell so, me. uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, you put me through a really hard workout. I felt like I was about to throw up, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, just the vibe, just very motivating. And, but my main thing was, like, I wanted to prove, like, I had always boxed as exercise. And I had always done it. But for me, if I have a goal, like, I, I need goals in my life. And so, like, it was good for an exercise, but I felt like I wasn't learning and getting better. And I was like, okay, I've been boxing since I was a kid, but I'm not really, like, like – I knew that I wasn't, like, I just wanted to get better. I didn't yeah. want to compete at the time, but I wanted to get better. I yeah, so you had been fitness boxing as a kid. You yeah. weren't really competing as a kid. No, no, no. Because when you were a kid, you were doing it as for fun. You weren't going to tournaments and stuff like that. No, right? no, no, no. Okay. No, so it, was just, wanted, no it was just, it, so I felt it was good. I, I, for yourself. I wanted, you wanted to, like, to compete. Yeah, I, I, I did it for, like, fitness. I, I wanted to be in shape. And then I, and it was good mentally for me because like mm -hmm. it was a good release, you know, like, um, and like the endorphins and everything. But, um, yeah, so then I came here and then I, I just really just like wanted to get better. And then I remember you had me start sparring Evan. Yeah. And, um, and I hadn't sparred in forever, so I didn't really know. And of course, like. You would die every time. Oh yeah, my fight. asthma. After, yeah, we would call you asthma attack. Yeah, it was my every time. asthma attack. It, it, it was the two girls. She was asthma attack and Evan would have a panic attack. You were the so, double attack. Yeah, so it would be like one girl's having a panic attack, the other girl's having an asthma attack <laughs> yeah. every time yeah, they spar. Yeah, after we would spar. I was like, oh, my goodness. But she was competing to want to fight. Yeah, she wanted to compete also, yeah. You know, and, um, and, that, and you know, and, like, so I – and so that's one of the things. I was like, okay, like, I was – we'd go at it, you know, with each other, and that was one – the start of me starting to believe in myself just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like – well, if she's someone that wants to compete and we're going at it and we're, you know, like, it's not like, you know, yeah. we're about like just trading back and forth. That was like the start of it. The start to believe in myself just a little bit. What took you over the hump to compete? Because now you're competing. Now uh, you have five fights. What, yeah, was the, it, what was the change? Something changed. What was it? It was, well, it was, well, for one, like I was going through such a hard time. This was like where I came, like mm -hmm. at my escape. Like when I came in through those doors, like it was the only time that like I was happy. Yeah. And then I'd go home and still struggle. But when I was here, I was happy. I forget about everything, you know? And I was still dealing with like health issues and all that at the time too. And I've always in the back of my head, cause I still need my brother compete, mm -hmm. um, like wanted to get in the ring and compete, but I never thought I could do it. One, because I had health issues and I never thought my body would physically allow me yeah. to. And then two, I just didn't believe in myself. I didn't the, think I could. Your brother was actually here with us and he actually, a cool thing is that he had his pro debut the same day you had your amateur debut. No, it was my- It was your second fight? Uh, it was my third. Oh, it was your third? Third. Oh. Well, anyways, you guys fought the same day. Yeah, we fought the same day. How was that? And you're actually going to fight again the same day because he's fighting on this card also. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was really cool because, like, that's always been a dream of his. And here I am fighting on the same event with him. It was pretty cool. The family, everybody loved it. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good time. Yeah. So um, you're actually one of the first uh, boxers to do my warrior program that I started. Yeah. Um, and you've been taking the series and you've been going hard about it. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? Can you tell me a little bit more about it? You started off um, when I first presented to you, how'd you feel about it and how you feel about it now that you are four, four levels up on it? Well, uh, anything you're going to present to me. So like, 
you gotta trust your coach. I didn't trust you with anything. Yeah. There's things you tell me to do. I don't. I don't know why, but I, I, I later figure it out or yeah. still don't know yet. But thank you for saying that because I tell everybody that if you do not trust your corner, your people around you, then they shouldn't be around you. And that goes around with everything. It is not just boxing, but it goes into life. If you can't trust the girl you're with, you can't trust your your friends you're with, then uh, maybe you should look for a different girl and a different group of friends if you can't trust them. Yeah, no, that's and true. And that's how it goes with, with this. That's why I like boxing is so well, it makes so well with life. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you trusting me because honestly, you've always trusted everything that I said and yeah. I wanted to thank you for that. Yeah. So keep going. So I presented it to you and then. Yeah, so I mean, I, I was like, okay, I'll do it. Like I, there's always a reason for everything but like i really like it because for one it keeps you motivated and goals and like it um there's like different things you can do and it's made me a better boxer it's made me understand boxing more like there's things about usa boxing rules that i probably wouldn't know now but it's part of like some of the things that you have to know mm -hmm. and um i think it's i think you need small you, okay you need big big goals but you also need small small goals and some of those things help me become a better boxer but not even a better boxer a better just person yeah you know and that's exactly how it came about i wanted yeah. to, somebody to work towards uh, create little goals working towards your big goal because in working towards the long-term goal it's kids kind of uh you get you lose motivation discouraging well, you lose motivation even like in a workout mm -hmm. you know and um i mean i always have fights that are like motivating me but like if i didn't have a fight like to have that yeah i mean you know what i mean yeah. like it, like for someone like in the so beginning what level are you on right now you're in, you're an impaler right impaler yeah and i'm working on my versagentrix yep and you have uh it's gonna be your you sixth fight yeah and so I've you got five ten. more five more to go and, uh, but yeah, you're coming up along great. Um, I, I, my goal is to be the first one. Yeah, because right now it's between you, Angel, uh, Alex, uh -huh. Blake. And they're guys, so they can get fights a little easier. So yeah. it's my, I want to be the first one and be, well, you're gonna be not the just first be the first girl, six. but I want to be the first one yeah. altogether. Yeah, because <laughs> that's, that's going to be killer. Imagine a girl beat him. Yeah. Um, if you have, if there's a girl listening right now that's getting bullied, Mm -hmm. or is an amateur boxer struggling, what would be your tip of advice to share with them? If, if a high school girl's listening to this and she's getting bullied, what would you tell that girl? I mean, it's really down to, like, finding something that you, you have a passion in and, like, doing something to believe in yourself. Because, like, once you can believe in yourself and have confidence in yourself, yeah. you can handle anything. And you know, and you had always told me, like, I remember one day, uh, I, I did something stupid and you weren't really happy about it and I was on the speed bag and you and this is before I like had my first fight and you explained to me like if you can figure out the things like in the boxing ring life's so much easier mm -hmm. and I was just struggling with a lot of things at the time but it's very true because a lot of things that I learned in the ring it makes my life so much easier yeah you know and if you, and if you like know who you are inside and like well grounded you can get through a lot of things a lot of it has to do with your mind and which is that's what boxing is very mental sport very mental and lonely Lon lonely difficult sport anything else you want to add or anything you want to tell everyone that's listening about amy mentor something we do not know about amy mentor anything you want to share with us um can you tell us about your fight when is it where is it at where can they get tickets media day tell us you get tickets from me oh, uh, nowhere else but her you hear that <laughs> Okay. No, you can get them at the gym, too. Uh -huh. um, you can get them from David Malgoza or Tony Hernandez mm -hmm. or Jose. Uh -huh. um, but uh, me. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> But no, it's February 7th. It's a Friday. Um, it's at the Doubletree Hotel, Uppercut Promotions. Um, it's professional and amateur fights. It's always an amazing event, amazing boxers in our area, and um, it's going to be a really good show. It's, cool. They're always... A How about uh, Media Day? What is Media Day? Can you tell people what you're going to do on Media Day? and what? Yeah, it's so it's a chance for everyone to see how we train for our fights. And um, you get to come meet us and come see how we train. We'll do just a little sample of everything yeah. to see what it's like. Yeah, but we're going to have food this time, and it's free. Uh, so we hope to see you there. And how can people keep in touch with you? Where, where can they give us your social media? Shoshana Girl 15 <laughs> And that's uh, on Instagram? Yeah, on Instagram. Okay. Or I'm on Facebook, Amy Minter. Amy Minter. And uh, cool. Thank you guys for listening. Um, if you guys have any feedback, uh, let me know. Send us a message. Tell me you heard this. Uh, let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll catch you guys on the next one. We out.